For centuries, hanko or handcrafted name seals have been an integral part of Japan's culture. However, as the country transitions to the digital age, this tradition is taking a hit. That's right, with companies and the general public increasingly turning to e-hanko. Will the physical hanko eventually disappear? Michio Ishida finds out. Meticulously carving kanji or Japanese characters on what will eventually become a hanko or name stamp. Tomonari Sanada has been doing this for about 40 years. Depending on the intricacies of the design and the material used, he takes from a few hours to a few days to complete one. The most expensive hanko that the craftsman makes cost about 1,000 US dollars. Using hanko as a stamp of authenticity has become a common practice in Japan since a few centuries ago during the Edo period. And it's been required for official business since the 1870s. Today, from opening a bank account to purchasing property, you can't process documents without a hanko in Japan. This is my own hanko. I actually own several hankos. My surname, Ishida, is quite common, so even if I misplace one, I can find an off-the-shelf replacement easily, instead of putting an order with craftsmen like Mr. Sanada. They are called Sanmonban. These easily available off-the-shelf hanko are the reason why Digital Minister Taro Kono thinks Japan should abolish the practice of using hanko as an official seal of authenticity. Cheap hanko or sanmonban uh, doesn't certify anything. Anyone can buy hanko with, say, kishira or kono and uh, put the hanko on the paper. So. Having a hanko on the paper doesn't mean this person is actually writing uh, this application or writing this form. In 2020, at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, many Japanese found it impossible to work remotely because many documents were still required to be sealed with a hanko. It was at the time that Mr. Kono called for hanko to be banished. Mr. Kono's declaration of war against Hanko was considered highly controversial among government agencies, but it resonated with Naoki Mitsuya. So Mr. Mitsuya works for a company selling e-Hanko and is finally finding more demand for its products since entering the Japanese market in 2015. This, this industry expert, I've been here over 15 years, so I've never heard so such kind of very strong comments from the government. However, so Japanese clients, customers still need a, like a hanko stamp. Still, many find it hard to completely do away with hanko. Big companies I talk to say they are shifting to digital hanko where possible. But there are sections in the company where this is not possible. It's specifically the administrative department. As he pushed Japan towards a paperless future, Digital Minister Taro Kono said it wasn't his intention to hurt the hanko craft, which already sees a dwindling number of artisans in recent years. I'm a hanko lover. I have quite a few of them. And uh, whenever people ask me to write uh, something, I usually put a couple of hanko uh, on it too. Even Naoki Mitsuya, who sells e-hanko for a living, confessed that he loves physical hanko too and has recently ordered an elaborate hanko with his name shaped like a smile. It does seem that hanko as a craft form and collectible will still have a place in Japanese society even when the country becomes paperless. In any case, hanko craftsman Sanada says he is not giving up his trade. To him and many hanko lovers, the unique crafts are more than just a seal of authenticity. Michio Ishida CNA, Tokyo.